So today we're going to talk about the maximum, minimum, and the roots of a quadratic equation. We've seen this structure before coming out of grade 10, obviously, and we're familiar with all of this. We, we know the maximum is up here. That's the highest value this ball is going to hit. And the minimum, in this case, I guess it would go down forever. Or if it was the ground, it would stop there, technically, over here. So the minimum values are here. In addition, the idea of the roots, the roots are also what we call the zeros. So this value here and this value over here. So how we write a quadratic, if we have a quadratic like this that's opening up in this direction, okay, has a positive leading coefficient, there are three ways to write it. We use standard form, which is this algebraic version that we saw. We used vertex form, which the, remember the H and the K gave us the vertex down here, H and K. And we use the factored form where we have R and S and those two values gave us the zeros there and there. So depending upon what we were doing with the quadratic, we had these three different ways of looking at it. Now, since the vertex can be a priority, we're going to examine how we, we find that. So a lot of times we're curious as to this minimum value or this maximum value. And to do that, we do what is called this process completing the square. It's a process that allows us to basically switch from analytic form into vertex form. <clears throat> so for example, suppose we have a quadratic y equals x squared minus 14x plus 38. And we want to put it into this form, this vertex form here, because we're curious as to the vertex, h and k. Step one, <clears throat> we factor the first two coefficients. So here we have the x squared and the negative 14x. Our common factor is going to be one. So remember, one is always a common factor. In this case, it's kind of funny. You took a one sitting out front. I can always factor out a one. It may not be a comp one. There may be other factors than one, but in this case, it's just going to be a one. And what I do is I write that one out front and I just common factor the first two. And we see even that step, even that simple first step gets us into this form. It gets us closer to this form. Here's my number out front. Here's my number out front. Here's my bracket. Here's my bracket. And here's my number floating on the end. Well, here's my number floating on the end. So it's actually that one step gets us almost halfway there. Step two. This is kind of the funny part. We add then subtract the square of half the coefficient. So negative 14 is the coefficient. So the coefficient is negative 14. I'm going to cut it in half, make it negative 7, and then I'm going to square it and make it 49. And what I do is I add 49 and I subtract 49. By doing that together, it means I'm essentially adding zero to my expression, which I'm allowed to do. But it also creates a trinomial that I can factor, which I need. So for step three, I need to reduce the brackets to a trinomial so I can factor it. So I need this to be written just those three terms. So I have to just take this negative 49 and pull it out of the bracket. And when I do that, this negative 49 comes out, I have to multiply it by the one out front. So one times negative 49 is obviously negative 49. So in this case, I just write it outside. Here's the bracket here. I just write the negative 49 outside of the bracket. Once I'm there, I can now factor the first three terms, find two numbers that add to negative 14 and multiply to 49, which of course are seven and seven. And then I can combine these two terms together. Last step, I combine those last terms. And that's it. I'm now written in vertex form. I have the 7 and negative 11 would be the vertex. Now since the leading coefficient is positive, the vertex is a minimum. So I would know it would open up. I would go over to 7 uh, negative 11 down here and it would open up like that. Let's try this one. 2x squared plus 16x plus 15. I common factor the first two. 
So between 2 and 16, 2 is a common factor. So I pulled it out front and I'm left with x squared plus 8x. I take my 8, I cut it in half, makes it 4. And I square that 4 and I make it 16. And then I add 16 and subtract 16 into my expression. Again, that's, the, that's a funny looking step for sure, but we have to do it. Now from here, I'm going to pull this negative 16 out. And when I do it, I have to multiply it by 2, which makes it negative 32. And then I'm left with a trinomial that I can factor, which I do. And I combine the last two terms, and that puts me into vertex form. Now, we can also use the zeros if we know how to factor to figure out the vertex. So given this function, f of x is 2x squared plus 4x, suppose I don't want to complete the square. Suppose I just want to factor first. Well, okay, I'm going to make this equal to 0 because we know the zeros occur when the value of the function is 0. So I just replace f of x with 0. Then a common factor, a 2x. So this 2x is common in both of them. So it sits out front. That leaves me with x plus 2. And then I can solve both of these for x. I know if this times this is equal to 0, then I know 2x has to be 0 or x plus 2 has to be equal to 0. Remember that? That's an important property for us. Remember that, okay? If you had, you know, a times b equals 0, you know if this times this equals 0, you know one of them, a or b, one of them has to be equal to 0. That's just the property. That's how we get 0 as our answer. One of these things has to be zero. Same idea here. If I have you know, a times b is equal to zero, you know, two x times x plus two is equal to zero, that means two x has to equal zero or x plus two has to equal zero, just the way it is because it, it's equal to zero here. So now we just have two linear equations, easy to solve. So divide by two, that gives me x equals zero. Here I subtract two, obviously x is negative two. That part's easy. And then once I have my two zeros, zero and negative two, I want to find the middle of them. I want to find the, the middle value. So I'm going to find the average. So I'm going to add them together and divide by two. And that will give me the x coordinate of the vertex. I would then just take that x coordinate, which is a negative one, plug into my function, and that will give me the y coordinate. So my vertex, I know, is at down at oops, uh, negative one and negative two. And we, can, we also have this formula as well. It's like a mini formula, okay? This is gonna tell us the x coordinate of the vertex, which is really the same as the x coordinate of the middle of the zeros because of the symmetry. So this x coordinate here, okay, is the same as that x coordinate down there. So we don't use this formula a lot. It kind of pops up every now and again. It helps us, but that's a kind of a third way to help you get that vertex. And just the last thing, just remember for a parabola, if x is positive, it opens up like this. And if, sorry, if a is positive, it opens up. And if a is negative, it opens down. Okay, that's it.